Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 20th of August. This is the last video I'll be doing for Elliott Wave stock market. Tomorrow at 10am we launch Pure Elliott Wave and next week that's where your analysis will be. We'll have one week of putting it in both places just in case some people don't get the message but after that it'll all be on Pure Elliott Wave and I'll be e emailing you your usernames and passwords tonight when we've finished the analysis. I've slightly re well, somewhat relabeled that third wave for the main wave count in the daily chart. It's got a better, it's got a pretty good fit, it's got a good look, and it resolves a problem that the previous wave count had. I did that because upward movement on Friday didn't fit short term expectations, although price did remain below the invalidation point. It didn't look right. It looks like we have a zigzag down to the last low, but three days of pullback is not enough to resolve that bearishness with the uh, AD line. I believe. And so I'm going to still expect a minor degree fourth wave to continue lower or possibly only sideways. It could be a sharp pullback or it could be a sideways complicated consolidation and it's impossible at this stage to tell which of those two situations it will be in. I expect support about 4300-4301. We do still have alternate wave counts which are more bearish. The second is extremely unlikely, but the first is possible. Let's do Elliott Wave analysis first, followed by classic technical analysis. The Elliott Wave count still sees cycle wave 4 over here and cycle wave 5 beginning, possibly to end in 2029, maybe March or October 2029 of the 2020s, mirror the 1920s. Same, same, different. Cycle degree waves should last from one to several years and cycle wave 5 will most likely unfold as an impulse at primary degree that will be labelled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Primary wave 1 looks like it's unfolding as an impulse and it looks most likely to be incomplete with intermediate 1, 2 and intermediate 3 extending which is very very common for this market so this first wave count has a good fit and follows the most common tendency for this market this market has a very strong bullish bias intermediate three may only subdivide as an impulse minor wave one looks like a very good impulse minor two a quick shallow pullback minor three an impulse which for this labeling is 15.94 points longer than minor wave 1. Minor waves 1 and 3 are close to equality but in my previous labelling minor 3 was a little, sh well not a little, a reasonable amount shorter than minor wave 1 which is unusual for this market. I have resolved that problem by looking at how minor wave 3 subdivides. Minor wave 4 may therefore have begun at this week's high not back here. And so minor wave 4 may have only just begun. It may be expected to continue for at least two more weeks, possibly longer. Minor wave 2 subdivides as a double zigzag. We'll look at minor 4 at the daily chart. But it may not move into wave 1 price territory below 3950.43. Draw this best fit channel from the end of intermediate wave 1 to this high here. Place a parallel copy on the end of intermediate 2. If minor 4 is particularly deep or time consuming, look out for eventual support about the lower edge of this channel. Let's look at the daily chart now where the high for minor 1 is this high here, minor 2, a double zigzag lasting a couple of weeks, 12 sessions, minor 3, a really good looking impulse, and minor 4 may have only just begun at this last all time high for the S&P here. Minor 3, an impulse, 1, two, an extended third wave, a shallow sideways fourth wave and a short fifth wave. Within the third wave, the third wave is extended and the first wave is extended. Minuet wave one, I've put some price points here for you, ends at 4218.64, this is its price extreme. Minuet four, a sharp pullback, has its low at 4233.13. There is no overlap between minuet waves 1 and 4. I wanted to put those price points on for you, just so that you could be clear that there is no overlap. This wave count meets all Elliott Wave rules. 
Minuet 4 does overlap Minuet 2 price territory, a motive wave gives you a warning that that's breaking a rule, but that's not what the rule says. The rule is very clear. The fourth wave may not overlap the first wave price territory, and sometimes when a second wave is an expanded flat, as this one here is, the fourth wave can move into second wave price territory. The rule is clear, the fourth wave may not overlap first wave price territory. This is not first wave price territory. If minor 3 is over here, then what structure could minor wave 4 be and how long could it last? What might it look like? Minor wave 2 was a double zigzag lasting 12 sessions and relatively shallow. Minor wave 4 would most likely be a sideways combination flat or triangle and within those it may include a new all time high as it's part of its B or X wave as in an expanded flat like the second wave was or a running triangle. So we have to be flexible and open to possibilities. I expect we may find support about the 0.236 Fibonacci ratio, about 4300, and about the lower edge of this channel. Draw the channel from 1 to 3 with a copy on 2. If it's deep enough and time consuming enough, it may find support down there. It can't move into one price territory below 3950.43. It would be extremely unlikely for it to be over in just three sessions as a very shallow, very quick little zigzag. That's possible, but only if we see a new all-time high from price and elimination of all that bearishness from the AD line would I consider labelling minor 4 over here. While there's a lot of bearishness, short mid and quite a bit of mid-term bearishness from the AD line, I do not want to label minor 4 over here. At the hourly chart level, here's the high, the last all-time high, which is now labelled minor 3 and the start of minor 4. A zigzag looks likely to be complete here. I did not want to label this 1, 2, 1, 2. It meets Elliott Wave rules, but this upward movement is bigger than this upward movement. This looks like a complete zigzag. This looks like another complete zigzag. I am going to tentatively, at the hourly chart level, label minor 4 a possible double zigzag, although that would not give it alternation with the double zigzag of minor 2. However, alternation is a, rule, is, sorry, is a guideline, not a rule. It's not always seen, and it's not always seen in exactly the way you expect it could be. Minor 4 could be a double zigzag, it could have a short W wave and a much longer Y wave. There could be alternation between the double zigzag of minor 2 and minor 4. You really have to be quite flexible with that guideline of alternation and remember it's a guideline, not a rule. If we expect a different structure for minor 4, and I am going to have to work with alternate wave counts in coming days as we need to be flexible and open to multiple possibilities because there are more than 23 possible corrective structures minor 4 could be. If it's going to be a sideways structure, we could have wave A of a flat or triangle. We could have A, B, C of an expanded flat. We could have a, B, C, D, E of a triangle, we could have W, X, Y of wave A of a flat or triangle. I'm probably going to have to move the degree of labelling and I'm probably going to have to work with alternate wave counts in coming days. Over the next probably two weeks the analysis is going to get pretty complicated. That's the nature of corrections. This really isn't any different to normal understanding within technical analysis of how price behaves when, it, when it's in a consolidation or pullback. First of all, you don't know if it's going to be a sharp pullback or a sideways consolidation, and if it's a sideways consolidation, classic technical analysis gives no structure to how price may move within that consolidation. We have to understand it's choppy, overlapping, resistance and support can be breached before price returns to within the consolidation zone. Elliott Wave tries to give it more structure, so I'll try to do that for you over the next couple of weeks, but the focus at this time, and when a correction is in its early stages, should be on identifying when it's over, not on trying to identify all the little swings within it because there's too much variation possible. At this stage, I can, with 
a small amount of confidence as much as I possibly could say it's really unlikely to be over here it's too shallow it's too brief it doesn't have good proportion to minor two at the weekly chart level this is an alternate it's possible that primary one is nearer to completion with intermediate one two three could be over but for this count it doesn't look like it because this is a semi log scale but three is actually a little bit shorter than intermediate wave one that's rather uncommon for this particular market this market has a strong bullish bias its third waves are almost always longer than its first waves so this is unusual and here this third wave also shorter than this first wave the fifth wave is shorter still so the third wave isn't the shortest all rules are met here minor wave three is just over 514 points and minor five I think 420 something points so the third wave is definitely not the shortest it's a bit of a visual illusion with the slope of it this third wave, however, is shorter than the first, so the probability of this wave counts rather low. If intermediate four does, does begin with somewhat surprising strong downward movement, which is what I'd expect for an intermediate degree fourth wave, then look for it to find support at the lower edge of this channel, drawn from one to three with a copy on two, Intermediate 4 may not move into Intermediate 1 price territory below 3588.11. And finally, in the spirit of considering all possibilities and after what happened back here in February 2020 when a surprise bear market began, what if that happens again for the third time in 100 years? It was but from 1920, so it's actually now 101 years, from 1920 and onward, there are only three bear markets which have occurred after less than four months of bearish divergence between price and the AD line, and this was the third. The first was, I think, 1947 and then 19, 1946 and 1976, and they're all relatively shallow as well. And so if a surprise bear market does occur, I'd label it primary two. It can't move beyond the start of one, below 2191.86. I would only have confidence in that view if we see a new low below 3588.11 or, prior to that, a clear strong breach of this channel on this weekly chart. Intermediate force should find support there. If downward movement doesn't, then this could be what's happening. I want to be open-minded and consider all possibilities because I wasn't open-minded enough back here. I want to learn from that mistake. This wave count does not have much support at all from technical analysis. A fourth time in a 100-year event has a low probability. This is an exercise in probability, not certainty, sadly. I say that often, I wish it was an exercise in certainty and I did have a crystal ball but I don't. Okay, classic technical analysis now. This week completes a hanging man candlestick pattern. This is a bearish reversal pattern, supports for the short term at least, a bearish Elliott wave analysis. We've had this happen before though, we had a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern here, followed by upward movement. We had a gravestone doji here, followed by Oh, sorry, this little one here is a gravestone doji, followed by a little bit of downward movement, another bearish engulfing candlestick pattern here and here, this one followed by zero downward movement, this one a really small little pullback. A hanging man candlestick pattern is not as strong as a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern, that is the strongest bearish candlestick pattern. This one's particularly strong, but didn't actually get followed by, well, didn't get followed by anything more. So this does support a bearish Elliott wave count, but it's not definitive. It's one piece of evidence. Volume is pushing price lower. We've seen that before, though. This candlestick pattern had good strong support from volume pushing price lower. So one piece of evidence. No signal from on balance volume. There was bearish, well, there is actually technically really, really weak bearish divergence. If you very carefully check the point from RSI, from this week to this week, this week slightly below, but it's so slight, I'm just not going to, I'm not able to give that any weight. RSI, I need to fix this, this is just back into neutral territory this week with a little pullback. ADX declining at the weekly chart, no clear trend, 
MACD, well, mostly whipsawing, this week bearish, ATR flat. At the daily chart level, we've got this hanging man candlestick pattern pretty close to the high, and then it had bearish confirmation, only followed by one more day of downward movement as price bounces off support at 4370 and break, broke through resistance at 4425, which may now offer some support. Volume pushing price lower and now an upward session with weak volume. Now in normal conditions I'd read that as bearish but this market has been able to sustain a bull run on light and declining volume for years. So in current market conditions I cannot read this as bearish. It's happened before and been followed by more upward movement. ADX is below 15, too low to indicate a clear trend, no clear trend at this time frame. The moving average situation though, solidly full bore bullish, all averages are positively sloped, the short above the mid, above the long, which is far enough below to not be able to be seen on this chart, and prices above all three. That's a full bore bullish look. I would expect, we'll get to the AD line, but I would expect more of a pullback rather than just three days, but not necessarily a bear market. This is a solidly bullish looking chart. On balance volume has no new range. RSI had weak triple bearish divergence which did weaken but it's still evident. It's really weak though. MACD bearish, stochastic still in neutral territory. Let's look at breadth and volatility because this is where we see the bearishness. This week the AD line has made a new pivot low price has not made a new corresponding low. The AD line is declining a lot faster than price. This is pretty strong bearish divergence. It adds to an already existing cluster of short term bearish divergence between price and the AD line and it's this chart and the daily AD line chart which has given me reasonable confidence in expecting a pullback. We had three days but I don't think it's over. I think it's going to continue a bit lower or maybe just grind sideways for a couple of weeks frustratingly before this bearishness is resolved. The cluster here is big enough to expect it can't be resolved in just three days. And looking at the daily chart the AD line is falling faster than price. This point back here, this point back here, the AD line hasn't made a new low, but it's a lot closer. Price is a lot further away. Breadth is falling faster than price. There's quite a fall of breadth in this down, under, underlying this downward movement, which is bearish and supports either the main or the first alternate Elliott wave count. It's not enough to support that very bearish second alternate Elliott wave count. That's only there in the spirit of considering all possibilities. What about volatility? This week, inverted VIX has moved lower, Price has moved lower, no short term new low, no new bearish divergence, but there is already an existing cluster of short, mid and long term bearish divergence. There's over three years of bearish divergence between price and inverted VIX. If you want to find some evidence for that very bearish Elliott wave count, here it is, but it's only one piece in the whole puzzle. It's just not enough for confidence in that wave count. Both inverted VIX and VV, sorry, VIX and VVIX moved higher this week. No new divergence there. The last couple of signals were bearish. The short term picture, both price and inverted VIX have moved higher. No new short term divergence. Still have this cluster of bearishness from inverted VIX, short, mid and long term. No new divergence from VVIX. And that's all for me to end the week this week and the last video for Elliott Wave Stock Market. I'm so looking forward to our website launch tomorrow and seeing you all at Pure Elliott Wave next week. Thank you.